Welcome to the Cloud Foundry community panel. Um, for those of you who have been watching the keynotes, you probably know at this point that Cloud Foundry is an open source software project, um, and it has a lot of members. If you look at even the, the slide that has all the member companies, um, one of the things I think is most powerful is that it's not just providers on that slide, it's also a lot of users. Um, so people that are using Cloud Foundry are participating in the community, they're participating at the organizational level, and they're participating at the individual level. And those people are from all sorts of different industries, from automotive to financial to Internet of Things. And so we have, I think, one of the strongest, most diverse open source software communities that are out there right now. Um, to give you an idea of the size, there are 190 meetups listed on just meetup.com of people that meet, um, try to meet regularly um, once a month to talk about Cloud Foundry. There's 45,000 people signed up in those meetup groups, and they're around the world, every, every continent except Antarctica. So I, I'm going to have to have a mission to start a meetup in Antarctica. Um, so I've brought some of the most successful meetup runners here. I didn't bring them. They actually still asked to come and participate. And um, what I wanted to point out before we get started is that this is a panel, and this is an open source software project, and so you will get out of it what you put into it. Um, so we're hoping that you all participate, that you throw out your ideas, that you ask questions. Um, I just finished a book a couple nights ago that was a science fiction book about Mars. It was really interesting. It had awesome technology, awesome character development. The plot was going really well. And I was getting really worried because every time I looked at the bottom of my Kindle, it was like 20 minutes left. And there's still like three spaceships floating out there that don't have power, and there's like aliens chasing them. And I'm like, how is the author going to wrap this up? Well, he didn't. Um, so I was left hanging with the spaceship still, you know, floating out in outer space, and I don't know if there's aliens, and I don't know what happened. That will happen to you if you don't participate in this panel. So if you have a question, <laughs> If you have a question, it is up to you to bring it up. Um, we'll have the mic in the middle is open at any time if you want to jump up and ask a question. And there's a URL where you can submit them and I can see them here and I can ask them for you if you'd rather do it that way. Um, so first I'm going to have the panelists introduce themselves um, and they'll say their name and maybe what meetup, meetup or meetups they run and kind of who they are. So since they can't see the slides, we'll start with Kim. Oh, it is on. Hi, I'm Kim Bannerman. Um, I run the Seattle and the Atlanta Cloud Foundry meetup groups, and I started both of them. Okay, this sounds like they're doing really modest introductions. Um, but Kim started two really active, huge meetup groups. Mark. I'm Mark Carlson with the ECS team, and uh, helped co-organize the Denver meetup. We've been doing that a little over two years. And uh, we started that in the, the days when we'd have about eight or 10 people, and it was sad, and we'd bring speakers in, and they would have not very many people to talk to. The good news is, after a lot of work and kind of promotion, we average around 75 people in our, our meetups, and we have kind of our content calendar now planned out through September of this year, and so people interested in coming to speak, and so it's been a fun uh, journey to, to see the community really get behind Cloud Foundry and come on to talk about it. Awesome, thanks. On to Paula. Hi, I'm Paula Kennedy. Uh, so I run the London Platform as a Service user group. So our group is slightly different. It's not just Cloud Foundry. It's a wider kind of group. Um, so other platforms, essentially. Uh, we've been going since about 2012. Um, and we've got just over 800 members now. So it's a really big, big community in London. And, and Paula has trained her group not well, not only to focus on Cloud Foundry, but also to have fun, and they are all in the bar right now. <laughs> Bridget? Hi, folks. Wow, my mic is very loud. Um, hi, so I'm Bridget Crumhout, and um, I don't actually run a Cloud Foundry specific meetup. What I do is uh, I am the current unelected head of the shadowy global cabal that brings you DevOps days. And I also run the Minneapolis DevOps Meetup. So that means I'm encouraging people to submit their Cloud Foundry content to DevOps Days conferences everywhere. Um, and I have a couple of coworkers showing up in Minneapolis June 1st. And I checked earlier today, and there were about 170 people RSVP'd to a DevOps Meetup to hear them talk about uh, you know, Cloud Foundry, you know, Spring, uh, Docker, Neo4j. So like, um, Casey West and Kenny Bastani are coming and speaking. So that's kind of a, an example of, and our turnout is I'd expect at least 120, 130 people to show up for that. So that's kind of my 
I like to bring the Cloud Foundry into the uh, other meetups and further parts of the ecosystem. Which is an awesome way to grow the community of Cloud Foundry. Daniel? Okay. I'm Daniel Crook. I'm a software engineer at IBM. Uh, I founded the New York City Cloud Foundry meetup in 2013. I've uh, also helped co-organize OpenStack New York and have been running New York PHP for over 12 years at the IBM location. So many folks on my team as well run the Cloud Foundry meetups in Austin, in Seattle, along with Kim, um, and uh, Silicon Valley area. So if you went to that CF camp that was scheduled on Sunday, that was a outgrowth of a, a, a vibrant user group around here that um, was able to uh, align with the summit and create some great content. Awesome, definitely. I, I did introduce myself. Um, I work for the Cloud Foundry Foundation, and I focus on the, the community and the developers of Cloud Foundry. So if I can help you in any way, let me know. With that, we're going to move into the panel. And you might, if you're on Twitter, you might have um, met some of these people virtually through Twitter. They've been pretty active all day. So if you could help us out, and while we're up here not tweeting, if you could take over the job um, and tweet for us during our panel, that would be really awesome. So if you, if you use Twitter, please tweet. Um, you can tweet quotes, you can tweet questions, however you'd like to do it. So I'm going to start out with a question for the panel. And at any point in time, you are welcome to jump in, but I'll just kick it off with a question. I'm curious why you all do this. Like, what, what is important about growing the community to you? Why do you invest your Thursday evenings or your free time into growing this community? I guess I'll start. Mm -hmm. um, so I, one of the great experiences of running a meetup for PHP for all those years was that you learned that it was a great place to um, learn new skills, find new job opportunities, and for people hiring or freelance, you know, looking for partners, the meetup was a great place to, um, to find that. So I, I thought it was a great idea that Cloud Foundry was growing it and needed to build a community around it. And one of the, um, I think, most important parts of what we do in terms of running a meetup is that Cloud Foundry is such a complex, sophisticated piece of software that in order to learn how to use it effectively, you can't just work with virtual resources. It really helps to talk to people that are in the community using the technology and sharing their lessons. So that's why I do it. So the ability to ask face-to-face -face questions is important? Uh, I'll go. As, I'll say as a, as a service provider, uh, you know, we believe in the value that uh, Cloud Foundry brings to a lot of our business customers. And so it's really growing the community and growing the exposure of those customers to Cloud Foundry helps them. And, uh, and then getting to kind of hear real-time feedback from people who are, are, are trying to do real, exciting, at-scale things with Cloud Foundry helps us to get better and see where the challenges are. And, and obviously gives us great market intelligence from a service provider standpoint. Uh, but mainly it helps us understand the areas of pain that we can help uh, it really take back into the Cloud Foundry community itself to make the product better, uh, but also you know, services that we can provide to help our customers. So. Don't forget the part where it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I was running meetups before I worked for a vendor just because it's fun. And now that I do, uh, it certainly is also great for you know, our field because it's easy for them to say, hey, we have you know, some pivotal coworkers are going to be speaking at, are going to be running this event, you should show up. And it's a great place, a good soft entree for people to come and learn something without getting you know, the handshake hard sell. It is fun, and I agree with Bridget, but it's also ridiculously hard work, <laughs> I'd have to say. I mean, I do, with our London PAS user group, so we call it Lopug, we do an event every month, except for August and December we skip, because people tend to be away. Um, and doing an event every single month is hard work. I mean, I enjoy it, it is fun, but it's finding the speakers, and organizing the food, and you know, making sure you have the venue, and, and it's, it's, not, um, it's not nothing. It shouldn't be underestimated. Yeah. So right. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna skip ahead. Pa Paula, I know you're really good at finding speakers, and you have a couple te <laughs> specific techniques I've watched you use. You wanna talk about how you find speakers? Yes, okay, so um, there's a couple of things I tend to do. So being a PaaS user group, we try to keep an eye on the competition. It's one of our secret agendas. Um, which is great. It's great for all of our community. We like to invite people from, kind of from OpenShift and Docker and various other people that are doing similar things, similar technologies, so that we get to see what they're up to, mostly, um, and try not to 
be too sarcastic when we kind of ask them questions about why they aren't using Cloud Foundry. Um, another thing I tend to do is actually look at other events that are going on. So Bridget mentioned DevOps days, and I like to see other speakers that are kind of in our community, particularly um, I look for people that are kind of not always white men, kind of the typical speakers. We try to encourage a more diverse kind of group of speakers at LOPUG. Um, and I find reaching out to groups, so we have a Women Who Code group in London that's very big. We try and reach out to them for speakers. We try to approach you know, different groups, um, just to have a balanced view, actually, at LOPUG. Oh, and I should, to play off of that, and I, I want to hear your thoughts on that too, Kim, but it's not just getting you know, people to uh, come and talk about the stuff they're doing. It's also kind of fun when you can get a Docker meetup to let you go talk about Cloud Foundry at their meetup. I mean, and honestly, or even at like a DevOps meetup, pretty much if you put the word Docker in it, it's like, you know, it's like putting the word unikernels in it is starting to be, it's just sprinkle some magic on it. So maybe you can show them demos and be like, hey, these are exciting and yet irrelevant details, but let's look at exactly what the capabilities are. That goes really well. I actually have our Docker um, organizers, uh, pretty good friends of mine, and so we cross post in different, uh, our groups, and we try not to do them on the same night so that we can share the community. Uh, that works really well in Seattle. Yeah, it works the same in New York. One of the, our best meetups, our biggest meetups are the crossovers. So, especially with uh, OpenStack and Cloud Foundry, yeah. you have opinionated people on both sides. Yep. You know, they're well, always trying to one-up each yeah, other. Yeah, now with the .NET support within Cloud Foundry, we've done some crossovers with Visual Studio users groups where people are hearing about things like 12-factor and cloud-native for the first time ever. And so that's, you know, it's exciting to kind of broaden out the awareness to a group that may not have even encountered those concepts, which is kind of hard for us that have been in the echo chamber for a while uh, to consider. But there's, there are you know, large uh, you know, technology communities that are not familiar with the things that we've kind of been hearing every day right. for the last several years. And that cross-pollination between meetups and user groups is so key because you get people who maybe would never think to go to a Cloud Foundry meetup because they'd be like, well, I, I'm not using that, so I'll just go to a meetup about something that the hype cycle has told me I should go to. Um, but you have a meetup, and actually when I said 170 people RSVP, that was just on the DevOps part of meetup.com because we are co-meeting for that one June 1st in Minneapolis with the Docker meetup and the uh, Cloud Foundry meetup. So that probably puts us above 200 RSVPs if I went and counted. And that's getting people who maybe wouldn't have thought about it to consider it and look at it. So I'm going to move a little bit to the audience because someone has asked the first question. You asked it anonymously, but if you tell me who you are, I can give you a little Cloud Foundry Lego creature later. Um, so, so to get everybody warmed up, um, could everybody who has been to a meetup stand up? Awesome. So you need to. Sh Share with the person next to you after this is over what the best thing about the meetup was. You can sit down. Has anyone helped organize a meetup or organized it themselves? Awesome. Round of applause. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, you can sit down. Is anyone here because they, they want to run a meetup and they haven't done it yet that's willing to raise their hand? Awesome. Cool. All right, so all of you have experiences at meetups that are valuable or organizing meetups that are also valuable. So, so feel free to share those or feel free to ask questions of our panelists if you had something that didn't work well, that didn't work well for you and you're curious how they did it differently, um, now is the time to ask. Um, we got a couple of concrete questions online and one of them that's getting a little Lego guy or gal, there's no hair, there's no facial features, <laughs> no gender. No gender. Um, when we're talking about community, uh, what kind of breakdown are we talking about? Is it users, service providers, core committers, evangelists? Who's in your community? It's everybody. So we get everyone from VP level down to core users, down to people who are, hey, I'm in the enterprise and I'm sick of shipping applications and it taking way too long. And so I'm a little curious. I've heard about this Cloud Foundry thing. So we get a very big gambit. When we were first going, like I think Mark and I talked a lot when we first got it off the ground on our meetups in 2013. Um, we were mostly vendors sitting in a room talking at each other. <laughs> right, and thank right. goodness we've moved past that pretty quickly. I yep. I would say that we've seen it shift, uh, just like Kim was saying. So in the early days, it was interested parties, uh, either from providers or from service providers. And uh, unfortunately, we've, we've seen the adoption take place so that now we have more 
actual business customers, enterprise customers at scale, and, and we've been you know, really fortunate to have them come and talk about what they're doing, and, and that's when we really see the growth kind of accelerated, so we move past kind of technology hobbyists and enthusiasts into actual real-world use cases that we all really want to be talking about. That's right. Yeah, we do a mix as well, so we have to vary our content. We have some regulars that are experienced with Cloud Foundry and that brand new beginners so you got to make sure you know you can tailor the talk to the audience for who's there. I think that's pretty important as well. So we, we get a mix and it's not consistent. And um, in fact, one of the, the funny things about the name Cloud Foundry is, it, it like OpenStack, OpenStack's clear, but Cloud Foundry sounds like a place. It sounds like a startup incubator. So sometimes you get people come in there not thinking about Cloud Foundry, the technology, they're thinking about cloud in general, a place to build clouds. So it's kind of interesting. You always get a few of those people. So. We have a couple of questions here. Uh, the next one's kind of a, a logistical one. How did you find the space for your meetup? Bridget? Um, the key for us is local employers who very much would like to attract like practitioners to their companies uh, tend to be very interested in hosting. And sometimes they can fund the food and drink. Sometimes you need another party to come in and fund the food and drink, just depending. But that has been the least of our problems, really, just because um, like in Minneapolis, we have a SPS Commerce as a supply chain logistics company that wants to hire people, you know, in this like whole DevOps platform orchestration realm. And then uh, Target, headquartered in Minneapolis, is very excited and happy to host. So, cool. one thing I would recommend is when you find a good venue, keep going back. Yeah. I mean, we have uh, with our Lopa group, we go to the Pivotal office in London, and we meet there, same place, same day of the week, mm -hmm. every month which means that our regulars kind of know, even before we've announced when the next meetup is or the schedule, they know it's probably going to be this time, it's going to be at this place. They know how to find parking. Right? <laughs> exactly, they know it well. Rail. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, so we played I mean, around with different locations for a while. We were trying to do, I mean, in Seattle, you've got the east side and you've got uh, Seattle. And then in Atlanta, you've got OTP and ITP. And so very different. People outside the perimeter don't want to travel the other side. It's very similar to Seattle. They don't want to travel across bridges. It's traffic. So we started getting more consistency and we started having it in the same place, for sure. Yeah. I generally agree with that, but we've actually had some success in New York with scheduling at IBM, at Pivotal, at third-party companies that are users, not vendors, and actually at Pace University. So we had a whole bunch of students come. But the consistency is key. I think the time of month, the day, right, the third Tuesday in what, every month, I think that's more important, at least for our venue um, in our city. But if you're able to vary up the menu, venue, you get different types of folks come out. Sometimes you can t um, attach to a conference, maybe at the conference venue going on, just like what the Silicon Valley group did here. Um, but also, if you can engage students you know, at the start of their semester, January, September, you can get a nice uh, so, diversity of new but, members. So we have a couple of questions about how to start up meetup group. Um, so when you're first getting started and you're small, how do you attract the sponsors and the speakers and how do you generate interest when you're just beginning? There's, a, there's several questions on that topic. So. so the best place to start is to look at the sponsor companies for Quad Foundry Foundation. See who's local in your town and reach out to them via LinkedIn. That's what I did in Twitter. Um, I found a Pivotal SE that was in Portland, Oregon. This is before the Pivotal office in Seattle opened. Um, and we kind of got it off the ground from there. And right, something right. related to what we were just talking about to keep in mind is if you're going to bring a speaker in, often like a vendor might have, you know, someone like me or the members of my team who travel around and speak at a lot of things. Having a little bit of flexibility with your days is really key yeah. because if you can only have your event on the third Wednesday and then the speaker that you really want is available only on Tuesday, like having the flexibility there between if you can manage it with your venue and everything else gives you um, the ability to book speakers that otherwise their work travel schedule would make it impossible. Right. I was going to say, oh, in terms of starting your own meetup, um, so we actually did a presentation last summit here and had a couple of best practices for that. Um, there's some slides available if you look at Cloud Foundry Summit 2015. Uh, but uh, number one, I think one of the best lessons is if you've seen a great talk here and you want that person to try to be your first speaker, um, talk to them, go out, engage them on Twitter, talk to them after their talks see if they're going to be around the area. Um, or if you go to meetup.com, find maybe you know, a city that's near you. Yeah. And then if someone's already in town for that, perhaps you know, for us, uh, we can have Boston, Washington, Philadelphia, New York. We can kind of find the speaker that's on the circuit, as it were, and kind of bring them in. 
Uh, so that's those are two different ways. You and can be do careful it. too. Um, if you're wanting to start one from scratch, make sure there's not one that's already there. Exactly. Yeah. That's my biggest number one pet peeve of community. <laughs> <laughs> we have an audience question in person. I mean, I can. I, I definitely do try to schedule um, to meet together with a relevant meetup group as opposed to trying to oppose them on the same night. We actually, the most recent uh, DevOps meetup in Minneapolis, we had um, a local Go meetup was just starting up and, and they were doing the, were, there's already a Go meetup, but it was really defunct, so they were trying to start one that would actually meet. And they were actually going to book the exact same target venue on the same date and time as us. And they were kind of approaching it through a different silo inside target. And I suppose, you know, since we were already existing and probably could have crushed them, we could have done that. And instead I said, come meet with us and we'll feature you. Yeah. And, and I'm trying to get to a lot of the questions online. So yeah. if you really want yours, I'm probably standing up so easier way to get it answered. So I just had a couple of quick questions. Um, the first one is we have a, so I'm Corey, I'm from St. Louis. Uh, we have a, a Cloud Foundry user group meetup in St. Louis, but yep. attendance has typically been pretty like small, like typically less than 10, and most of those people are the Pivotal employees. Um, so how do we, you know, how do we increase attendance? How do we reach a broader audience? I do like the idea of having like a, a PaaS user group, but the, I guess the second thought is since most of the employees are Pivotal employees, or most of the attendees are Pivotal employees, you know, I, I kind of get the feel, I guess, that it's a like a pivotal Cloud Foundry meetup instead of just like a Cloud Foundry in general. You know, we run open source. Um, is that is there are there any other you know meetups that are that are having that kind of yeah issue? Yeah, I, I know I St. Can, Louis pretty well because I used to work at CenturyLink, and I know some of the guys that help yeah, organize that's, that one. That's where we always meet. Yep, at CenturyLink, yeah. right? Yep. Um, the best thing to do is look at your customer base, um, and then look at other meetups that are going on, and start having them cross post for you. Exactly. Yeah, the cross posting. So if there's a Java, Node, Ruby, mm -hmm. open source, Go, anything, anything like that. that you can join mm -hmm. and do a co meetup on a particular topic, like for for us, we did you know uh, Cloud Foundry for PHP developers, right? And that was a crossover that we had. It's a good um, idea. And it, it, it made both groups you know larger. They both got to meet and learn the technology, and that's what we want to do going forward in New York. Is you know. Uh, there's Java NYC, um, there's NYC Ruby, yes, things like that. And by joining with those groups, um, it's a good way to just cross pollinate and get people yeah. aware. I mean, I think yeah. if you look for strong meetups in your area in related topics, so the Denver Java Users Group and the Denver Open Source Users Group are both kind of related to what we're doing and interested. So we've actually gone and, and done presentations at those venues. And what that tends to do is drive attendance back because they want to go deep, perhaps, on the Cloud Foundry side. And, and you know we support each other's communities, and, uh, and and so that's you know it's just we help drive attendance for them, and in return we get something back, and so it's you know it's it's a, a win for both. And so you really another... you can't go wrong partnering with Docker, Docker, Docker. <laughs> yeah, as word bingo, folks. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like if I could go back and say, hey, you know, to the Cloud Foundry meetup, let's start talking about Docker, or Kubernetes, or like some yeah, of the other options. you put containers in your meetup there. and just tweet yeah. it and have people tweet it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just containerize your meetup. Exactly. So, yeah. so we we are an open source software project. And, and so those, those other projects may sound like competitors, but part of our strength is figuring out how to work with them and how to, how to make those technologies work together if users are trying to use them both. So I don't think it's bad to like feature Docker at a Cloud Foundry meetup. When considering, I just, well, I just came out of a great talk at Cloud Foundry Summit all about uh, using containers, mm -hmm. um, using Cloud Foundry as a container orchestration engine, and how uh, Run C is now in Cloud Foundry. Like, that would be a great talk at anyone's meetup yeah. if you could get something like that. Yeah, it was standing room only stuff. three rows back is what I heard. I have another logistical question. Um, how do you schedule the talks? Like, is it always talks? Is it sometimes workshops? Is there one speaker, two speakers? I, I think like the Denver meetup usually tries to have like a user story and then a technical talk. What? So we have a, a pretty standard format in LOPUG. Um, I don't know if it's the right format, but it's what we always do. So typically we have uh, two speakers on a night. We will open the doors at 6.30 p.m. and we have food and drinks available for people to arrive. We start the first talk at 7 p.m. and we offer the speaker kind of 25 to 30 minutes with Q&A. Quick break, second speaker, that's also 30 minutes. So we aim to be kind of done with the talks just after 8 p.m. 
then we have a bit more time for networking and conversation, and then people leave generally around nine. And then what we started doing is once a year, so we do it in November, we'll have a lightning talks event. And we tend to have between six to eight speakers, each speaker does five minutes. And what we specifically try and do at that meetup is encourage speakers who have never spoken before. So we try to get, you know, first time speakers um, or kind of underrepresented kind of groups to kind of come, someone to come and speak. Um, we had somebody who spoke at our lightning talks two years ago. And she's now gone on to speak all around the world at different conferences. And she That's came great. she came back last week uh, and gave a, a half an hour talk at our session. And one of our kind of audience members said it was the best talk they'd ever seen. I think we also rotate and, and try to pick an introductory topic. So in January, uh, we had a couple of our regulars give a kind of a Cloud Foundry 101 uh, talk. And it was one of our biggest attendance you know, uh, events uh, of the year. Uh, because there, over time, there becomes kind of this pent-up demand to do, um, you know, to really get into the basics, and, and you, you gather people that are new, and uh, you need to come back and address that from time to time as well. Yeah, we do that too. Um, the Atlanta meetup is very different than Seattle. Atlanta has not, you know, tra traditionally a little bit behind the curve sometimes, and so um, we have to do um, mostly just meet up and get to starting to build community. We're still very much in the building community phase there, and so we'll we'll do the one on one. We'll do you know a little a piece of what the Cloud Foundry platform does, you know, and we'll kind of focus on those things. Seattle, we're afforded better, you know, not better, but like more speaker availability. It seems like because we do have so many of the vendors that are there in Seattle, and we do we have one speaker typically, um, but we meet every third Thursday of, the, of Wednesday, when every third Wednesday, so. So we have a, another set of, of questions that relates to how do you get feedback from your meetups to the broader community? What support does the Cloud Foundry Foundation and the Cloud Foundry community offer you? So how does your meetup interact with the larger world of Cloud Foundry, um, both directions? I'm, I'm asking you like four questions at once. <laughs> um. <laughs> so feedback, we try, I try to email folks twice a month, like usually when we're announcing the meetup and then we tell them what's going on. But after the meetup, say, hey, here's the slides. You know, what did you like? What did you not like? You know, would you, are you interested in speaking? We're always asking that as well. So, and as far as foundation goes, Stormy's created, um, pulling together the foundation's pulling together a list of speakers who people are willing to come speak at different meetups and things like that. And so that's been helpful as well. Yeah, I'll put in the pitch. If if you are a speaker and want to speak at a meetup, there are a lot of people looking for speakers. So I can always connect to you. Yep. <laughs> so we have a question on the floor. I was wondering, uh, how big of a factor is uh, a beer and a draw for attendance at these meetups? Is that to help with attendance? And was there a rumor that there was possibly going to be something here later today? Or? <laughs> yeah, I told you all to go to the bar and get a beer, and apparently I'm the only one who did that. So <laughs> yeah. don't leave. Yeah. yeah, no, we have beer. Uh, Pivotal does uh, beer and wine, and we provide the food, and it's usually, you know, people look forward to that conversation for sure. It's more of a festive. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you definitely have like uh, one of the best practices we have now is similar to Paula's where we have the pre-networking, which is the drinking, the snacks, you do the presentation, and then you have the Q&A and a little more networking. Even if it's not the same venue, people are encouraged to kind of go to a nearby watering hole or something like that. Um, but you definitely, it's table stakes now. It used to be you could just do ad hoc meetups and not have beer, but you have to do that now. How you know your meetup is going well is everybody wants to get together after and go drink that's a beer. Right. Yeah. Something I think important to remember, though, is if you have delicious beer and delicious food, and if somebody, like, say me, I like beer, but I don't always want beer. And if I don't want to drink a beer, or my friends who don't drink beer are there, and, like, there's literally nothing for them to drink, and it's like, there's the drinking fountain, that's not very hospitable. Yeah, not so friendly. it's important to remember yeah, that not know. everyone's going to want a beer at any given moment, and you have some other choice. Yeah. And we've had so, sponsors uh, in our meetup in Denver. Uh, that have signed up to either provide the drink or provide the food. And so that's been a, a big enabler so that we, we don't have to necessarily go hat in hand trying to find people for that. We've had some sign up for multiple uh, events, you know, or a quarter or two quarters at a time. And so that's been, uh, that's been helpful. So I, I'd like to hear from everybody on this next question. And that's, how do you know if your meetup is successful? Like, how do you know if your community is, is growing and is vibrant and is, is a healthy, happy community? Um, Kim, you mentioned that if they like to go out afterwards and hang out together, that's a good sign. 
Um, yeah, definitely. It feels like we haven't had enough time. They're kicking us out. Let's go over here and yeah. go hang out and keep talking. So that, I think that's always a great sign. Yeah, one when of my that starts happening. Yep. One of my favorite features, actually, I just discovered about meetup.com, is you can set up for your group um, that anybody can schedule an event. And once three or five people RSVP for it, it's automatically announced. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's happened to me. I'm like, oh, I didn't know that <laughs> happened. But it, it shows user interest. People are getting involved. They're coming up with topics. They're you know, presenting, just being proactive about it. And that makes me excited. One good indicator I find is the kind of the regulars that keep coming back. Um, I think it's a really good sign when you've got uh, a set. It's not always great, but to see lots of faces who are kind of continuously interested and keep coming back, and then they're spreading the word, and then they'll bring a few more people along with them. Or you'll see someone who maybe came as a, as a new person to Cloud Foundry, and suddenly they're working at Pivotal. And you're like, oh, I've seen your face before because you've been to my meetup, and now you're working here, which yeah. is you know, fantastic. I think another sign of, of health is when the, there starts to be an identity so that the, the group itself says, hey, we don't want vendor pitches. We don't want fluff. You know, we either want substantive technical content or real-world business stories, but don't, you know, don't give us kind of easy stakes kind of things. And so the group begins to take on an identity and kind of demand a higher quality of content, a higher quality of speaker, not the professional pitch, but you know, more substantive content. And I think that's, you know, when we saw kind of the, uh, the tipping point for our meetup is, is when the group began to say, this is what we want. Yeah, and that I, wasn't it. <laughs> Sorry. And yeah, I, and I think that uh, that's totally right. And also per Paula's point, um, not just people coming to work at Pivot, although please come work at Pivotal, pivotal.io slash careers. You saw it was on the keynote stage this morning. Um, but for not just any specific company that may or may not be assisting with the meetup, but people inside your community excited about the technology, learning about it, and getting jobs throughout your community using the technology. As you see that happening, I think that's a sign that the meetup is functioning as, you know, within acceptable parameters because the whole point of getting people together in person is so that they can do things that they're going to do in person, like, you know, get these new jobs. Well, I think, awesome. the, you know, the participants of the meetup begin to be recognized for, hey, I, I saw you in the meetup, I heard that talk. Uh, I really liked what you said, and then that becomes, you know, you, you become known for contributions, and, and your company or your individual brand is, is known, you know, beyond just the, that scheduled night of the month when you're having the meetup. So that is some tidbits to give you on how to run a meetup. Hopefully you were inspired to either go to your local meetup or help start one if you don't have one. Um, to wrap this up, I have a bunch of little uh, Lego Cloud Foundry figures. Um, some of them have smiles, some of them have frowns, one has a beard. Um, and we're going to do a Cloud Foundry meetup uh, bake-off. So a bunch of you stood up and said that you go to a meetup. The meetup with the most attendees, each one of you gets a little Lego thing. So shout out your meetup. Shout Denver. What? Denver. Denver. If you're from the Denver meetup group, stand up. So there Represent. are four, five, it's six. All of you can stand up to uh, me no, too, seven, <laughs> and Mark Customers. eight, nine, ten. All right, any other meetup group think see a friend of yours, think you can challenge Denver? Oh, that's just sad. Yeah. No. Hey, get your Nobody's gonna up, challenge please. Denver. Denver's gonna get the little Lego Your? figures. See Plus how? the first couple of people that ask questions, especially the first person that said when we're talking about community, what's the breakdown? You can come get your um, Lego creature. So thank you very much for joining us. The meetups are a super important part of Cloud Foundry. They are, I think, a really vital part of how new people join the Cloud Foundry community and how companies and individuals decide to evaluate the technology and find other people to talk to. So this is a crucial part of keeping our community alive and healthy. Um, and I appreciate all the interest in it. And hopefully you were all inspired. You know all of these people's Twitter handles, they're all super friendly. They will all answer any tweets you send them. Um, so thank you all very much and enjoy the rest of the conference.